Hi guys, it's Elaine here, the Animal Reiki Lady. I am dropping, to, dropping by today from the beautiful sunny state of Colorado. A lot of you folks in this group are from Colorado, but I know we have people all over the world actually in this group and it's growing every day. It makes me so happy to be able to offer this kind of support. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, you've, there's only uh, there's a couple new folks in the group. Welcome, first of all, and also let me introduce myself. My name is Elaine and I host this group. I'm the Animal Reiki Lady and I use Animal Reiki and meditation as a way of making deep spiritual connections with the animals in our life. And that's both here and on the Rainbow Bridge. And I love to offer this kind of support. And sometimes we talk about really woo-woo things and I call them Harry Fairy. Um, from my little dog, Winston, who I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, Woo-woo, hairy-fairy, airy-fairy, those kinds of things. And sometimes we talk about more practical things. Um, today, it's going to be kind of a mix of the two because I'd like to share with you, I love to offer insights for those who are still overcoming some grief, who are still trying to manage grief from the loss of a pet, and also insights into how we can create a, an even better relationship with the animals who are currently in our little world. Um, so with that, um, I want to start, I called this video, what you really ultimately love about your animal companion is not visible, it's invisible. That love that we feel for them, that heart to heart connection that we have, and you know it, it's that special soul connection that your, you and your animal companion have. Awesome. awesome. It is awesome. Often it's even a deeper connection than we have with many of the human beings in our life. It's that thing that we just can't put a name to other than that feeling of love, but it's more than that. It goes deeper than that. It's that invisible connection. And we often have it with more than one animal or we may just have a soul animal. Hang on a second, I'm just kicking my shoes off. Get more comfortable. So I wanna share with you a little bit about Winston. I mentioned this earlier in an earlier post. I wanted to talk about Winston so that you can know a little bit about what I have experienced. I have also experienced loss um, a loss that I did not anticipate, one I did anticipate and one I did not. It was in August of 2020 when my 13-year-old Black Lab Lucy crossed to the Rainbow Bridge. And the Rainbow Bridge is a topic for another day because it's, a, it's more a conversation about the place that we create in our mind where we think our animals go. Because we can't quite wrap our minds around the fact that their energy may actually still be here with us. And that's the invisible piece of them. I think of it as ice and water and steam. It's all a form of H2O, but ice is something solid and cold. When it melts into water, it's something we can drink and take inside of us. Or when it becomes hot or boiling, it can turn into steam and evaporate off into the air, but it never changes from its form. It just is a, a shifting form of energy as opposed to actually disappearing. That steam does not disappear. It just has gone into a different form of energy. And I feel the same way about our animal companions who cross. Their little bodies don't live as long as ours, and we can talk about reasons for that too. Why are their lives so short and why can't they stay here with us longer than, or as long as we need them to be here? And there's a couple answers. Number one, because I think they are born a little bit more mature than us. They're born with a sense of love that sometimes takes us 50, 60, 70, 80 years to get to. And they're, they also come here with a purpose. Every single animal comes into our life for a reason. And when their purpose is fulfilled, we have to keep in mind that they are on their own journey. Bridget, how you doing? It's good to see you. Hey, that's I should say that too. I love to say hi to everybody who watches these videos, whether you're watching this live or on the replay. Just put a little comment in below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your questions are. Um, but I like to think anyway that, um, I, now I've lost my whole train of thought. <laughs> All right, we'll talk about Winston. <laughs> Um, and the relationships that we have with our animals. So when they, trans when they transition, that's where I was, um, the reason that they come to spend times in our life is that they're also on their own journey. And when it's time for their journey to continue in a different direction, we have to be able to give them the freedom to, to do that and to live their own lives and to have their own preferences and make their own choices. But we can be there to support them and love them and hold them in a space of compassion and, and help them and be part of their journey. Um, and now you're laughing because I lost my train of thought. Thanks, Bridget. <laughs> okay, um, I want to tell you a little bit about Winston. Um, my loss occurred in August of 2020, and that was when Lucy, my 13-year-old black lab, transitioned. 
and hers was a planned transition. And by that, I mean we knew that she, for about the past six, the six months prior to August, she had been going through some serious age-related health issues. And my veterinarian and her and I were working on management all through those six months. We were managing her pain and managing her symptoms. Um, but it finally got, hang on a quick second, someone's trying to call me, so let's make that go away. Um, so when I do live streams, this happens, guys. And when I do live streams out with animals, you never know what's going to happen. Um, and so we were managing her pain and managing her symptoms, but it got to the point where she could no longer walk. Um, I was using one of those help me up harnesses and she would just look at me with those eyes like, mom, do you have to put that on me one more time? Because she needed to be carried and she needed to be lifted to go outside to go to the bathroom. Um, and she was, she was in pain and she was unhappy. And so ultimately I spent a weekend with her in a space of calm and peace and compassion and love and just letting her know that it was okay for her to go. She did not need to stay here in pain anymore, that we could help her, we could help with her transition. And the day of her transition was absolutely beautiful. I went to the veterinarian's office. We sat out back in a beautiful backyard space. The sun was shining on her. She was so calm and so peaceful. I never expected anything like it because that opened the doors for me, guys. That opened so many doors for me to help others. It's what inspired me to create this group because I knew that I can help, help change that and transition it from a time of grief and anger and resentment and fear. And what's one what of those other negative emotions that we all bring to us? Guilt. Uh, all those things. We can let all that go when we are proactive and help our animal to make their transition. So the part that, yeah, so this gets me a little emotional. It's okay. The part that, um, that became a little bit harder for me to manage was Winston. Winston is, was um, a rescue, and I'll tell you how I got him in a minute. Here's, here's a picture of my little Winston. We've got a little glare there, but he's, a, he's my little cutie pie. And now I keep Winston, a little reminder of Winston right here close by my heart. Um, Winston crossed a week later without, um, without any assistance. He crossed on his own. He was about the same age. We weren't 100% sure of his age. Um, because the way he came to us was, I say aliens dropped him at our front door, but I, I have no other way to, my husband and I were full-time RVers for almost four years. We just recently moved into a condo because we needed to just settle down a little bit. We were full-time RVers for four years. We were, we were living in the RV at the top of a mountain in the Rocky Mountains. We were in the middle of the woods. There was no, there was, it was just us. We had some neighbors, but they were all within not like, next door neighbors, right? Um, so one day, uh, Winston was standing at my door. I opened the door to the RV and I went down the, down the steps and there he was. And I, I couldn't even imagine where he came from. He was covered in green pollen, all, you know, the, all that little pollen that, that happens around the May time frame. He's covered in dirt and green pollen. Um, and he, he had some obvious physical things going on too. Like I could tell that he was not, not necessarily injured, but that he was ill. Um, and so I, I, I picked him up and I looked for, he had no collar. I took him right to the vet. So our, our, our vet that was down the mountain, I took, went right to the veterinarian's office. There was no microchip, no collar. <clears throat> I posted his picture and all his information on every community site, on all the humane societies at the local animal shelter. And, and nobody, um, came to claim him. And I took him to my own veterinarian who treats, who had treated, uh, Lucy and Jack. And he said, well, um, Winston, I, I ended up calling him Winston. Winston is a hot mess. Uh, he probably, if he makes it through the night, that'll be wonderful, but he probably wouldn't survive through the summer. And this was like the May time frame. He had a grade six heart murmur. He was completely deaf and he had congestive heart failure. And on top of that, he was just aging. The poor little guy, what I had thought, the, the things that I saw was just aging. So he wasn't walking right. He was just walking a little funny. And so the vet said, um, you might want to surrender him to the, to the animal shelter. And I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so at all. And within two weeks, I had fallen so in love with Winston that I was kind of glad that I had the opportunity to keep him. Not only did Winston survive the summer, he stayed with me for the next two and a half years. So it just 
goes to show what love can do for the animals that we bring into our life. And now, now that Lucy and Winston are gone, I've got a little hole here. It's just me and Jack. And there's, I've got a little hole here that wants to be filled. So I'm thinking that we are going to rescue a senior. I was doing, and I still am, doing medical fostering. So I take in other dogs who are, who either their owners are having a health condition that prevents them from caring for their animal, or their animal has a serious, serious enough health condition, like a stroke or a surgery. For instance, I had a, a dog with a stroke, a dog who had an amputation, and their elderly companions were unable to care for them during the healing process. So I brought them into my home and it was beautiful. It was wonderful to have them and I didn't want to give them back. So that <laughs> that's part of like, I'm a huge foster failure. <laughs> so anyway, Jack and I are thinking now that it's time to bring another dog into our home. And I'm looking at a, I'm looking at a senior and I'm okay with a senior with health, with health conditions. Um, I have no issues whatsoever. I think Winston and Lucy both have taught me how to care for animals with health conditions. Why does, what does all this mean for you? I'm simply trying to share with you that we have the capacity within us to set aside the grief, set aside the things that our culture has taught us we're supposed to feel when somebody crosses or when an animal crosses. And yes, there's, it leaves a hole. I get it. I have got a hole in my heart that's about, okay, so it's, it's that big. I've got a hole in my heart from my guys passing, even though I know they're still with me. I feel them all the time. That invisible thing, that love, that steam that has floated off into the ether, I know they're still with me. And all I have to do is close my eyes and open my heart to feel their love. And they're there. And it helps me get past any guilt. Because I did. I mean, I, I, you, everybody second guesses themselves. We all go, I wish, was there something else I could have done for Lucy? Did I really need to help make that decision? And the answer that comes back to me every time is all is well. I get an answer from her that says all is well. When I visualize Winston now, Winston isn't deaf. I visualize Winston. I close my eyes and think of him and I see him running on the beach chasing seagulls. That would I can imagine that would be his favorite thing to do. And you can create a space of love for your animal that's with you now. Just And it doesn't take, just just do it. Just stop worrying, stop, just be with your animal companion and let them know what a beautiful companion they are for you. Begin sharing that space with them. And if your animal has crossed, you can still connect with them. You can still feel that invisible force. It doesn't go anywhere. It's just not in their little body anymore. We can't scoop it up and hug it like we used to, but we can still benefit from their love and we can still feel their love. Okay, so I think that's all I had to say for now. I hope that I wasn't rambling because when I start talking about this stuff, all kinds of thoughts come into my mind and I think of all the next things that I should talk about. So thank you all for being part of this group. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being so supportive of each other. Whenever we welcome a new member into the group who's recently experienced a loss, it just fills my heart with, with love to see all of you guys supporting each other and it makes me so happy. So I, it's my honor to host this site. If you know of anybody who would like some support, this is a free group. Just invite them in. It's wide open to anybody who has experienced the loss of a pet or is preparing to experience the loss of a pet because I can offer plenty of tips for that too. All right. Thank you all for joining me. It has been great to see you here. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. From me and Jack and Lucy and Winston, we're sending you so much love. Take care. Bye.